In this video, we're going to be configuring Remote Access VPN on the ASA using ASDM. Before you start, you'll want to download the AnyConnect head-in packages for the operating systems that you'll support. You'll go to the Cisco Downloads page and type in AnyConnect. You should go to the AnyConnect 4.x option. On this page, you should see several head-in packages for operating systems like Windows, Mac OS X, and even Linux. Before this video, I downloaded the necessary AnyConnect head-in package, so we can go ahead and move on from this page. I just wanted to show you where you would go. Swinging over to the ASDM, there's a pretty nice wizard to walk through for setting up Remote Access VPN. You would go to Wizard in the top bar, and then VPN Wizards, and choose the AnyConnect VPN wizard. We'll start this configuration out by giving the connection profile a name. I'm going to go ahead and name it Acme-VPN. This VPN will connect to the outside interface of the ASA. On the next step, we'll configure the VPN protocols. We have the options for SSL and IPsec, as well as loading certificates on. I'm going to uncheck the box for IPsec and just use SSL only. For this step, we would upload the AnyConnect package, or if they're already loaded on the ASA's flash, we would add them to this VPN configuration here. I'm going to go ahead and click Add, then I'll click Upload, and this is where I'll select my AnyConnect package file. And then I'll click Upload to have this upload to the ASA. Should take a few seconds. After the AnyConnect package is uploaded, we can optionally assign a regex condition to this profile that would look for certain browser user agents. Based on the user agent, the ASA would ensure that the right AnyConnect software was installed. Next, we'll configure authentication. We're going to click on New to add a new authentication method. This is going to be our ICE server. I'll give the server group the name ICE. The authentication protocol would be RADIUS, but as we can see from the dropdown, there are quite a few options. For the IP address, I would enter the ICE PSN server IP address. The SA should use the inside interface to reach ICE, and I'll go ahead and share, uh, create a RADIUS shared secret. The next page is a continuation of the authentication configuration. I'm going to go ahead and click Manage to tweak ICE's configuration here. If I click the Edit button for the individual server, it just pulls up the information we've already configured for the most part, such as the server IP address, interface used to reach it, and shared secret. So I'm not going to worry about configuring anything for that individual server. Instead, I'm going to go ahead and click the Edit button for the actual AAA server group. Under the AAA server group configuration, I'm going to check the box to enable interim accounting updates and use the update interval of 24 hours. This provides the RADIUS server, or ICE, with updates about the RADIUS session. I'm going to check the box for enabling dynamic authorization. This allows RADIUS change of authorization to take place, which gives us the ability to change the level of access after the initial authentication. Optionally, if you have a SAMIL identity provider, that may be configured here as well. Since I'm not using SAMIL, I'm just going to go ahead and click Next. On the next step, we're going to configure the VPN IP address pool. This is not a pool of existing LAN IP addresses, but specifically an IP address block for your VPN users. I'm going to name this pool VPN Pool 1. The starting IP address will be 10.1.30.1, and the ending IP address will be 10.1.30.50, and I'll just go ahead and put the subnet mask as 255.255.255.0. On the next step, we can define which DNS and WIND servers that the VPN users should be using after they connect, as well as defining the domain name. By checking this box, we're going to exempt VPN traffic from NAT translation. I'll go ahead and check this now, and then click Next. Click Next again, and then we'll finish this configuration. Now that the wizard has finished, we can now see the new connection profile in our configuration. Now let's go to the group policy for this connection profile. I'm going to click the Edit button. In the group policy, we can change basic settings for the VPN connection. For example, I can add a banner when users log in. Let's go ahead and add one now. This banner is going to say, this is Acme Corp Spanner. Please don't log in without permission. We can change the WINS or DNS servers, as well as the default domain here. 
When creating the VPN profile through the wizard, it will tunnel everything by default after the VPN connection is formed. But let's say you want to do split tunneling instead. That would be something that we would configure here in the group policy by going to Advanced and then Split Tunneling. Unchecking the box for policy, we can specify if we want to tunnel all networks, tunnel just a network list that we provide, or exclude certain networks from being tunneled. I'm going to select Tunnel Network List below, and then I'll uncheck the box for the network list and click Manage to create a new network list. The network list is just a basic ACL. Since I already have one created, you can just see the single ACE for my LAN subnet. I'm going to go ahead and use this network list and click OK. And let's apply our configuration. And with that, we've come to the end of the ASA Remote VPN configuration in the ASDM. Thank you so much for watching.